Today, as promised, we're going to take this old tin that held a civil defense kit that's probably around from the 60s. We're going to turn this into a little Faraday cage that will protect some of our sensitive electronics from an EMP. Come and watch. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. Today we have something super special for you. A few weeks ago, we did an archeological dig on this amazing civil defense era survival kit. And we discovered all kinds of stuff that had been tucked away in here for a good 60 years. If you'd like to see that video, click the card in the corner. Most of it was disgusting. <laughs> Most of it was so bad. And there were fuel tablets and we also did a video on those to see if they would light. So yeah. that's another video you might want to check out. But Jonathan, overall, he, he was so excited because he feels like this would make the perfect Faraday cage. What's a Faraday cage? Okay, a Faraday cage is an enclosure, a metallic enclosure. Uh, sometimes it's a cover, sometimes it's an enclosure, sometimes it's a tin, sometimes it's a box, but whatever it is, this metal protects sensitive electronics from an EMP. And an EMP, I believe, is one of the biggest threats that we face, one of the, the most significant things that could hurt us. And so preparing for that, I think is something that everybody should consider. So if I put any of the electronics that'll fit, you know, this is limited by the size of the hole. Some right. things won't fit because of the size of the hole. But if I put any of my electronics in here, they're in here, when an EMP happens, then I can take them out and they'll be just fine. Yeah, they are protected. We can test how good this is by using this device that Dr. Arthur Bradley developed. This is a Faraday cage tester. Uh, basically two radios, one in here, one here. This one has the rubber duck antenna off and just a little connector here because with the, the big antenna, it's too much energy to accurately test. But you can see that because this can receive the signal, this is not protected. Because we're, we're actually putting that signal right into here. There's an attenuate in, in here that will allow us to, to figure out exactly the level of protection. And the other radio is in here. So this device allows us to just test and see if this is a good Faraday cage. And you can hear that. That right now, because that lid's off, it's not protected. Whatever would be in here would not be protected because that lid is off. But when we put that lid on and we need to make sure that it's sealed, we don't have to pound this down tight because what's gonna happen if you pound this down tight is you're gonna end up bending to get it back off. So it just has to make a good seal and we don't want to, we don't want to ruin that seal. So now if we test this and the distance is two feet, so that's about right here. And I've got this set on 91 dB. Um, 50 dB is sufficient to take care of about 99.7% of the energy. So at 91 dB, I mean, we, that's why this is so exciting to me because this is a super good um, Faraday cage. And so with that much protection, anything in here is going to be just fine in an EMP. Awesome. So now the problem that I've had with our Faraday cages is it only works if the items are in there. So organization is a real big deal, knowing where you put it and how you're going to get it. So let's talk about, can we take this out? Yes, let's take that out. Because that's just a test. And you know what? Everybody doesn't need to buy one of those. You just need a friend that has one. So, so if you're our friend, you can come test your Faraday cages. Yeah, yeah. And I think we'll probably leave a link for it. I'm sure we have a link for it, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, we do. Okay, so let's talk about how we're putting stuff in here. But one of the things that's nice about this for the engineer is that it's square and not round. That makes him really happy. <laughs> it does. Efficiency is important to engineers. But normally you would want to line this. Lining that would be kind of difficult. So. What we're going to do is we're just going to use. So let's talk about what this is. This is a radiation meter. It's yes. one of the old civil defense era ones. And um, theoretically, this would probably not be affected. But again, we're, we're just making sure that we have what we need when we need it. Because that would be a time when you would definitely need it. Absolutely. Right? And so I like just using this pillowcase. And that will go down in and fit very nicely in there. 
Another thing that would be very important to me would be our GMR, GMRS radios, which is how we communicate with our children. And they have theirs in Faraday cages as well, so that in a crisis, we can pull these out and uh, connect with each other. Um, if these are fried, obviously, that isn't going to happen. So now we have this all tucked away in here. It's cushioned and protected. And we're just going to slide that right in there. All set. Another thing is light. Now, I personally don't think this would be affected, but I don't know for sure. So I would rather be safe than sorry. We're just going to tuck this away. And our little hybrid lights, they're also power sources because they have the ability to use that solar panel and create electricity, which can charge your phone or a small USB device. Right. So for us, those are really important. Right. And, and it's important also to note that, you know, some of this stuff will need to be taken out periodically. We do our radio nets with our kids, you know, try to do it every month or two so that everybody stays fresh on how to use it. The, the flashlight will need to be charged. So we'll be using a lot of this. Well, so the hybrid lights actually maintain their charge they, for seven years. They actually do. But, but he's like, right. You want to always check them. I like to take them out, just check them and charge them. Another thing is our radiation meters. These are our new ones. These are in a box, so I'm not particularly worried. And I'm just going to put those in there so that they're all set. The other thing is communication. Uh, this is another thing that's critical to us. Um, not just our radio communication, but our ability to get AM, FM, uh, if those are available, shortwave um, reception on here. So we're just going to throw this in and wrap it up and slide it in however it will fit, just like that. You can see I've got another radio that I'd like to put in. Just happens I have another one or two of these tins. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll go in a different one. Obviously not enough room in there. Okay, then we're just gonna seal that up, right? Okay. And, and I should note here that chocolate is usually not affected by EMPs, so there won't be any chocolate in these tins, much to her chagrin. I guess we could put some in just so that she'd have something to do while I'm talking on the radio, but. So, I don't know if you remember, I created a video um, a few months, well, actually probably last year, and we stored chocolate in buckets and I marked them lima beans so that nobody would know what they were. Well, I went downstairs and I'm like, why did I store so many lima beans? So she hid it from herself, basically. Which is very convenient because now I know where it's at. So John had a really good point about making sure that we're pushing this down, right? Um, because we want, we don't want that um, signal to be able to get in. But he's not going to let me use this. Well, you can, you can use it. You can just tap it very lightly. I'll let you do this. But, but again, I don't think we want to tap that down super hard because we probably will mess up the seal on that if we're trying to, if we're really having to pull hard to get that open. Okay, now... One of the other things that I think is really important is like the labeling with the lima beans, if John tucks this away and I don't know where it's at, this is of no value to me Exactly right. if he's not here. Yeah. So it's really important that we decide where we're going to keep it, that it's appropriately labeled. Well, yeah, because nobody's going to eat your electronic equipment. Yeah, they might that's eat my true. chocolate. That's true. And, and see, this is just the right size to fit under my desk. So this will be right under my desk, pushed back where my feet don't hit it. What about the other two? It. There's room for two, but not three. So anyway, that's where those two will be. It's really important that we communicate, right? That's why we have these devices. That's why we're, we're talking about where we're keeping stuff. Right. But now with all the craziness in our world, it's a really good time to make sure that you have what you need in the event that there is an EMP because a little bit of power, a little bit of communication can make a huge amount of difference. One of our sons actually keeps his power station yeah. in a Faraday cage that he has easy access to, but when he's not using it, that's where it's stored. Yeah. And I'm going to have another video soon on another Faraday cage that's bigger that will be holding power stations. So watch for that. And now for the question of the day, when you saw this container, what great uses did you think of for it? Comment below.
and thanks for being part of the solution.